Okay. Uh, right, good evening members and members of the public who are watching uh, online. Um, welcome to this evening's uh, Ramsgate Town Council. Uh, Council. And without further ado, we shall get on. Um, item one, apologies. We have apologies from Councillor Hudson, who's uh, uh, recovering and unwell. Right. I think the rest of us are all here, I think, which is brilliant. Um, item two, declarations of interest. Has anybody got any declarations of interest on the items on the agenda? Just no. one of No, that's no, fine. You're fine. Um, item three, public participation. Did we have any no contact request. from the public prior? No, that's that. Thank you. Uh, item four, minutes of the council meeting to approve the minutes of the ordinary meeting of the council held on the 28th of August 2024. Um, have you anybody? Councillor Pat Everington. <laughs> you're, you're okay, you've got no yeah. Oh, beg your pardon. Sorry, I was waiting for problems. I thought no, 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 I've been saying up here. They'll come, Councillor. Okay, no, well, thank you very much. <laughs> so that's proposed by Councillor Everett, seconded by Councillor Nixie. All in favour of the minutes, please show. Thank you, that's carried. Right, then we just on to. Item five, which is financial finances, um, and there's two parts to this. So item one is to uh, receive a report of payments first to the 30th of September 2024. The council was asked to note the payments authorised by the town clerk and our finance officer, which is a total of £6,472.58p and approve the payments above the threshold delegated to the town clerk and RFO, which is a total of 21,048p and 91 pence. Anybody with any comments on that at all? Councillor Green? Perhaps I could just say that these payments are examined and approved by three members as they are made. Yeah. So so by this time, uh, they have been checked quite... Yeah. Uh, and added together. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's important for the residents to, un to understand that. Thank you, Councillor Green. So uh, can I have a proposal, please, to accept? Councillor Ossie and Councillor Edwardson. Mm -hmm. All in favour, please show. Thank you. That's carried. Right, item two of five. Uh, to consider uh, a report from the Deputy Town Clerk and Finance Officer and make a decision in respect of event fund application EF21 from GB Carnival CIC uh, stroke St George's Church stroke JH Events Limited for a Ramsgate Lumiere 2024 event to run from 24th of November 2024 to the 1st of January 2025. Uh, a report of the Chair and Vice-Chair of Town Promotion Committee is also attached. Hopefully, members, um, you will recall those of you who were here in relation to that um, process, um, relation to this at the previous Council me meeting, um, that this was basically deferred to FNGP agreement to via uh, an amount of money which was £8,000 uh, into the events fund uh, and that matches uh, the amount that the applicants had re required. Now hopefully you've also read the, the Chair and Vice Chair's uh, report as well um, so that it gives you a greater uh, greater outline of what the circumstances of it of it are because the town the chair of town promotion was concerned that um, there wasn't enough information for you to make a considered judgment um, obviously at that pre previous meeting comments were were made by the um, group of councillors who were looking and dealing with the the events fund 
and they made their decision on the application as submitted. Um, so I'm going to pass over to the town clerk who will go through it. Thank you. You've covered it, Chair. Oh. <laughs> um, just as a reminder that uh, Great British Carnival, St George's Church and GH events are working in partnership to, to create a spectacular winter event for Ramsgate, the Ramsgate Lumiere 2024. This aims to light up Ramsgate beginning at the Christmas light switch on on Sunday the 24th of November, including a parade to St George's Church and continuing throughout December and ending on 1st of January. Their ambition is to create a solid framework this year which can develop over time, making year-on-year -year improvements. Okay, so I'm now going to open it up to members for... Yeah, I'd just say maybe I should be there's an interest because I do eight hours work for St George's, St Luke's and St George's. I have no decision-making powers. No I'm interest. Just, just hired help. Yeah, no, thank you, Councillor Winger, but you, that's not an interest that you needed to declare. Members, Councillor Green? There's no doubt that the... The Christmas period for the businesses in the town is a vital time, the most important time of the year. Ramsgate has a tradition of putting on events over the Christmas and New Year period. That, those events being the light switch on, usually at the end of November time, and the New Year's fireworks. We have decided, because of uh, not to do the fireworks anymore, because of problems with the venue and the uh, weather. just the weather, just just getting it organised. So that leaves us with the Christmas light switch on, which frankly is looking quite tired and old-fashioned. I see this. What's proposed here as an opportunity to turn that round and to make Ramsgate probably the most exciting um, town in Thanet over the Christmas um, spending period. And therefore I, I would support providing funds from the council for this event. Yeah, yeah. Anybody else? Anything to say? I think this gives us a really good opportunity to, for some joined up thinking. Uh, I'm glad that it was rewritten because obviously it, it, I don't think we got the full picture in the last application. I, I do think the, 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 the lights in the harbour are a massive draw. Uh, I, I think this will be a, an extra added bonus to that but I also think we've got an opportunity to put a call out for anybody else who wants to join in so for instance in my world we've already got that fabulous alley wanting to put lights on their alley so I think there's a there's a real chance if we can get maybe somebody to coordinate everything and we do have a member of staff that could coordinate that and maybe put out a call for people who want to add their houses to the the light trail off their own back because we do have a lot of uh, a lot of houses with a lot of decoration on that could make a really good trail. I know I, in my car I often take friends to, to visit two properties, one at Cliff's End, which is remarkable, uh, and one on London Road, which is also great. So I, I think this is a real opportunity for some joined up thinking, and I think if, if, if it's done right and, and we try to encourage other people to join it, it could be a really fantastic thing, so it's got my support. Thank you. Catherine, you have anything? Yeah, I mean... I'm I think several of us have received an email from Arts in Ramsgate um, who want to get involved with this program and haven't seen it been for some reason or another incorporated in the consortium. Um, and she sort of made a very generous offer with regards to these premises and those other things and some match funding. So I think we need to think about that too. Okay. Councillor Nielsen. I think, I mean, I. I I mirror everything that people have said about wanting it to be, um, you know, a good event for everybody at Christmas because I, uh, you know, do think we need it and I think the town needs it. But, but let's look at what we've got here. 
So first of all, there is um, you know, a grant committee that goes through quite specifically the grants that we were given and the information that we were given and the decision was made on the information we were given. It's quite nice to get other information, although it's a shame that couldn't have come to the grant committee in the first place because I think that would have just made you know, this whole process a lot easier. And so we need to bear that in mind when people are putting applications in. But, and, and I'm going to come back to the application in a minute. But what we did recently, obviously, is we took some funds from another area and popped it back into the events thing. Now, we as a grant committee look at um, a variety of things to make our decisions. Uh, it's a um, place within Ramsgate, frequency, whether you're new, um, match funding, uh, longevity, uh, amount of people. I mean, there's a whole list that we really are thorough about how we do this. And so we um, also have an awful lot of other people that are applying for um, funds. So I, I, I think we need to bear that in mind when we're looking at additional money that's been brought across, is there's not just one other group that has been, you know, that, that would that would bid for this. So we can't just throw that particular pot of money at one particular event because, you know, that's just not the way it goes. And the other thing is, it's one one of the one of the things that we really looked at when we were at the grant funding is we wanted to make it possible to enable people. Um, to have some money to go towards their grant. What we were very much against, because there isn't the money, not that we don't want to do it, because there isn't the money, is to fund an event. Because it's not our event, we don't want to fund it, we want to put towards it. And so, I bear that in mind again with the amount of money that might go towards this particular event. I'm not saying I don't want to fund it, I do want to fund it, and it's nice to have the other information. But I think we as a council really do need to consider the other things that are coming on and also the priorities that we as grant cap, you know the group have and are sticking to that it's quite awkward when when if things sort of like um override that and so i just want to make people conscious of those things thank you i just want to follow up in you and cast question i just want to make a comment and that is really um as a council it's not our fault if people don't put a good application in. Mm. We can only determine what's in front of us. Mm. And I thought, in my humble opinion, that the uh, commissioner who dealt, dealt with that did a very a very good job of what was in front, in front of them. The other thing is, of course, that other people, other organisations who've been given an amount haven't got a second chance. Yeah. They're, not, they're not having a second chance for it to come back and money to be put back into in, in, into the events fund for that to, for them to get what they've asked for. So I'm just asking you to bear that in mind because we have to be fair and seem to be open to every application as, as it comes through. Not saying what they want to do isn't good or anything like that, I'm just making a point on the, on a, uh, on the level of what we should be doing uh, and I think we should be open with that. Councillor Quinn. Yeah sure, I, I just wanted to pick up on what Councillor Nixie was saying um, about the Grants Committee um, earlier. Um, as I said the last time, there was no criticism of the Grants Committee and I know the effort that you put into to looking for applications. Um, it was because I felt that um, it, wasn't it didn't come across as clearly in the application as something that we need to look at as far as um, how the system works and the functions maybe um, because that was unfortunate um, so I think it's, it's a really good point um, that you've raised um, and I'm sorry I, I don't know anything about an email from air you said it's been sent to some people but yes, I've not received it from Glenn Cullen sorry can you what's well, um, just say ask the question 
Councillor Hamilton raised um, the point that there had been an email from Air, and, I, and I'm just saying. I think, from Arts and Rats. Arts and Rats. Yeah. And uh, I'm not, as far as I know, I've not been part of that. I haven't had a chance to check all my emails yet. Yeah. Um, but, and I, and I hear what you're saying um, about the second chance, and I'm grateful for the fact that um, we have got this on this occasion, but I do appreciate that we don't want to make a habit of it. Okay. Anybody else want to say it's not spoke? Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's a and we did speak about this before. I have got an interest in the carnival. No monetary gain, but I am part of the carnival. And I did speak to uh, Theresa Askew, uh, acting as a, a Rampart Town councillor. We had a few minor complaints about the, the carnival that split away. That I'm being assured. It's, it's Councillor Chonk, excuse me, this is nothing to do with the carnival. Well, it's not carnival, yeah, so I'm not it's, it's, I'm the same it's, it's nothing to do with the carnival, it's to do with this specific event fund for the, That's fine. the Lumiere. That's right. Okay. Oh, it's not Barbridge, isn't it? Barbridge. Barbridge. Yeah. 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 I wonder if we can make the high street a little more exciting for the children. Because he's quite trapped. Well, you should just have us. Mrs. Cruz. Yes, yes. And it looks really grubby. I think it looks so hard. It's really, when I walk down the road, I think it looks beautiful. Would it be possible to encourage the shopkeepers to have, you know, sort of a, like a competition <coughs> amongst themselves? To make really exciting displays. I, I think part of this, part of their ap their application, was to display stuff in shop windows. Yes. And, and I think that will make it that will make it a lot better for the during the, Chris, the Christmas pit period. You're quite right. The county is shabby, and it needs a lot of work doing doing to it. It's a good wash. But yeah, get out your flannels. Uh, Councillor Huxley, then I think Councillor Nipsey, and then Councillor Green. So then. Councillor Critter's report, I support this as well. I support the full application of £10,000, which I would like to propose that we support all of us. I think it's a, it's a more positive outcome for the local community that <coughs> didn't really come through in the application. So definitely for school children and for young people, they will really benefit from this. And it will bring in tourists from outside of the town as well, as well as the local residents. At Christmas time, because um, it's in the evening, it goes on into the evening obviously, and it means people will stay in the town longer, they will spend money in shops, cafes, restaurants, or something like that. So I think there's sort of more to them just the application itself. Um, so the links with the harbour boats, as you said, Councillor Nixie, so it's the lights there, it goes up the town centre to the church, and there's all the amazing. I think uh, Rebecca Smith can show us. There's all the amazing sort of um, illuminations on the buildings as well, which is part of it. And that, I mean, they really are amazing if you want to look at it online. Um, so that's obviously not you can't actually see that. So it will increase the footfall. As Councillor Green says, there's no New Year's Eve fireworks, so you know we need something else, don't we, to liven it up. And because it's a sort of consortium bid, there's a lot of different um, uh, expertise that's come into this together. So we can take that on from this year, we can take it on for next year. So if we want to do it again. So next year we'll be better schooled in how we do it and we'll learn from it. So you know, I don't see that there's a problem. Okay. I think, I think it, it didn't come, the, the benefits of the application didn't come through properly, in my opinion. So I propose, Chair, <coughs> that we give a full grant of £10,000. Okay. Thank you. Is there a second for that? That's a quick one. Okay. I've got a few more. I've got a few more, yeah. Uh, Councillor Nixie. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so, so just to go on to from the, from the Chair's point, just to know that we have had applications so you're saying that you know, nobody else has got some advice on the chair. We have had applications. I've just missed the grants through the panel. 
and her, and their event would be um, too soon before the next branch scrutiny panel. We have had to say, I'm very sorry, you are not in the running, we can't do this. We have actually let people down. Also, all the other funding we did in that grant time, that particular tranche, you know, was on the monies that we had. Um, so let's bear that in mind. It's really mm -hmm. crucial that we think about the other people that are missing out on this, because we still have other things coming. This, this isn't the end of our budget. But the thing I really want to stress again is, one of the things, I mean, we, you know, we really do do this at the Fine Tooth Code, but one of the things that we look at, again, was funding in previous years. Also, how many years has it had? Because that's, you know, that's some things that's okay. Other things it's kind of like, well, maybe they need to start looking elsewhere for money. But also, how much have they had? And last year, there was a Lantern Festival. They got £2,000. And it's from what we were looked at with regards to a lot of other things were either us doing it or other people doing it. It just happened to be included in the grant application, but it wasn't them doing it. We decided that £2,000 at that point was adequate. Now, if we go for the full amount this time, again, that makes it very difficult next year when we think, well, they got £10,000 last year because, you know, prices are going up, our funding's not going up. And it makes it very, very difficult to give money to other groups. I really do stress the amount of other people that haven't had this money. And we've got a long part of the year to go yet. That's agree. Through you, Chair, could I ask the Town for Motor what the Council is doing in terms of the light switch on? Um, well, this, this, the switch on will be much the same as it has been. Um, the problem we have with adding any separate illuminations is it's the timing. So it starts to get up, sunsets at four this, this year, and this builds up to switch on, which is at 4.40 or thereabouts. So there's an, it, this, and that time is very concentrated around the stage and the build up. So we can't really have any extra things going on when we get started, other than what's going on around the stage. Um, we've, every year for the last few years, we've built on what we, the gifts that we get, and Santa's become a huge part of that. We, we gave out uh, over a thousand pounds worth of quality gifts to over 300 children, um, because we've got some very good deals. Um, and that ranged from babies to 15 year olds. Um, we're trying to do a little bit more with the live music this year, um, uh, but keeping it, trying to work with the community and stuff that they're, they, they're, they're doing. Um, but largely, it, it is kind of you know, the same event, but we, we haven't got the train. We're going to have some different children's attractions. Um, but, and of course, the family fair, uh, which is a staple of So, there will be children's attractions to meet Councillor Young's query? Yes, there will. Um, are, are we encouraging the shops to participate as well? Um, well, part of the Lumiere would be that the shops <coughs> would, would host either lanterns or a projection, depending on budget. Um, <coughs> But at the end of the event, there's also the opportunity to have this first parade. And then, you know, we've had Mountain Parade since 2016 and before. And I'm not 100% I'm not sure about who funded last year's event. I know St George's funded, I, I thought they'd funded all of it actually, but I, I'm not 100% sure about that. Um, but the idea of this is that we've, we've been having the lantern parade sort of in the middle of December or around um, solstice, that this is bringing this culminating with lots of community workshops. That some of the shops will post the lanterns to get people's appetite ready for this new event on the Eve, which would be the big lantern parade. Okay. Councillor Green, is that? Yeah, fine. You're happy with that? Okay. Um, Councillor Ara. Oh, I just wanted to say that, yeah, I really support this event and I think it will go very nicely with our new lights we're going to have, you know, for the very best, uh, first time. 
uh, for the town and everybody is very excited about the new lights. So yeah, and I wish you all the very best of luck, uh, Teresa and, and the team. Oh. I'm just wondering about how many times we're going to give the Yacht Club money for lights. We do it every year and I didn't think this last year was all that brilliant. And a lot of the yacht people buy the lights themselves. I do. And I just feel it's a lot of money. And we don't know what they spend it on us. I can't answer that question. Could I come in? Yes, please do. That's a great question. Events, I mean, the lights on the, on the yachts are brilliant. And, and they put Ramsgate on the map at Christmas time. But any event that likes that, unless it moves on, tends to get a bit stale and, and falls away. Whereas I see what we're talking about now as adding to that and perhaps um, you know, re revitalising it, making it more interesting for your owners to do what they've done in the past. Could I just before we, we move on? Sorry, I've got um, I've got Councillor Wing, Councillor Hemington, Councillor Crit Crittenden um, next. Councillor Crittenden, you might be able to answer this. I don't I don't know. Is the parade that they're talking about uh, the Lansing Parade New Year? Oh, maybe Rebecca might know um, with the the Lansing Parade New, New, New Year's Eve. Is that going down around down the harbour? At all? And um, will it all come down from, from St George's? Yeah. Um, down the High Street. Or down from the High Street, depending ha on. Harbour Street, the depends. Road, yeah. yeah. High Street, Harbour Street, um, crossing the B2054 at the Royal. Yeah. And then coming down Harbour Parade. Yeah, okay. Oh, and not, onto the beach, hopefully. Yeah, so not down by the harbour, but around the harbour where you've got the wood, because the boats are lit. I just wondered whether they're going to join up with the boats to be yeah, there. Come along, yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, Councillor Wing. Oh, I mean, the first Christmas light is on the boat. It's the only thing that keeps me going in the winter, that and St George's Lantern that's now lit. But I, I just wanted to ask one question and then, and then make my final uh, impression of what's here. What was the cost of fireworks last... And the cancelled fireworks? We knew what they were going to cost us, but I can't remember what they were. Was it in excess of 10,000? No. 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 So it was about five, and we basically got, if we were lucky, ten minutes of... Yeah. This is, you know, what I'm particularly impressed with by this project is the scope of it. So it covers a wider range, a wider area of Ramsgate. It's got the potential for growth, so to spread into Newington, Northwood, up Grange Road, into Addington Street. The duration is a month long, so there's a build-up of... Of, of activities. What, what I really, really am impressed with, sometimes we give out uh, large pots of money. I'll use my, the, the one I, I did use to chair, Addington Street. We got 2,000. We did attract 6,000, but we didn't really attract every demographic in Ramsgate. Okay, We didn't do that. We didn't, uh, we didn't attract people of a lower, <coughs> lower income. And this this will, it does. I, I think it's, it'll probably be the event that has the most diverse group of, uh, the, the, the most diverse mix of people, not only coming to watch the activity, but actually take part in it. The, the Samba Band particularly has adults with learning disability, and we should be so proud of that. So uh, I think we should support this, and I think it's got the potential to grow. I do think the key to this project would be co co somebody coordinating everything and trying to pull all the offer that we have in Ramsgate and beyond. So, for instance, I, I see Ellington Park are already advertising their Christmas carol. It would be great if it came under a Ramsgate Christmas offer uh, and, and working with the Newington, uh, the Newington Centre as well to make sure that we're covering everything they've got. Yep, so I'm, I'm going to support it. I enjoy walking around Ellington Park, but this, this just get you back. Get you back. But it, this has got potential to hang everything on it, which I think is good. <laughs> Lanterns, okay. Um, 
Councillor Hetherington. Yeah, I just want to be very clear about this. So what we're proposing is to put the 8,000, and we're not splitting it between the two mm. quarters. Yes, exactly. I just want to spell it. Yeah, well, that yeah. does give me concerns. Yeah. Because of the number of projects. Hang on. Oh. The other. Yes. Could you say that again, Councillor Richardson? People are talking about comedy. Sorry, the 8,000 times we're talking about the additional money. Yeah. Split, not split between the two quarters, but going into this event. Yeah. Yes. I just wanted to be clear about yeah. that. I have concern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, right. Right. Because um, we have a lot of projects. If we're talking about learning disability yeah. and various other things. That we Councillor Crittenden. Yeah, and more, the more people have spoken, the more things I've got on my list that, that I want to respond to, so please bear with me. Um, I thank you, Councillor Wynne, for your comments. This is um, anticipated, if this, if this goes ahead, this is in effect the first year that it would be a Lumiere, so there is some growth in future years. I think this year wouldn't be including necessarily Addington mm -hmm. Street, necessarily, but future is, uh, is there. Um, you mentioned about the fireworks. Um, that price that we lost last year, last time, was half price mm. because that was based on the previous year's price yeah. and the prices of fireworks have doubled. And right. more, I mean, Rebecca would be able to confirm those figures, but I'm pretty sure that they've doubled. So whatever we'd be looking at that now, it would be at least double of, of whatever it was before. Um, I think the comments about working together, um, and Rebecca's name has been mentioned, a part of that, um, the coordinating element would be um, done by the consortium working in conjunction with Rebecca and I'm hoping that people behind me that I can't see might be nodding their heads um, <laughs> so they can, they can, <laughs> other people have to tell me if they're nodding um, but that's coordinated that but, but certainly sorry all oh, right but certainly um, the consortium will be will be doing some of that um, coordinating because that's the whole that's the way in which a whole disparate collection of events turns into a Lumiere. It is that coordination. So that is the third element of this application. So there's two key events and then the, the coordination that brings this into a Lumiere. <coughs> and I just wanted to, to come back on the funding because I struggled and, and I, um, it's in here. I was work, trying to work out what funding had um, already happened with the three groups that are a part of the consortium. And I know St George's had funding for, um, there's a little bit that they received last this month, or the last month rather, and they did have St George's Day Parade. Um, but I wasn't too sure, and I think GB Carnival, um, because Ramsgate Carnival is a separate organisation to GB Carnival, and the fact that Carnival's in both of them, I think, had all my brain, certainly. Um, so I didn't know whether or not um, through the chair it would be possible to ask any of those who are present no. Um, I think because Jemima would know whether or not St George's was funded, um, apart from the ones I've mentioned. I would, in that case, I don't know if the town clerk has that information because I didn't have it. Not In that case, as far as I know, they, they haven't had the level of funding um, and I think there is a, a, a degree of, of confusion because of the overlap um, between some of the work that some of these organisations have taken part in and the work that they've done with other organisations and I, I don't have the answer to that in that case. I'm just going to play the back um, just to say that it's not our problem as a council as to, as, as to organisations mm. do or don't do, how they do it, how they don't. And, and, uh, and, and I think, you know, we, we, we don't know. This council has to determine the funds that it's got and how it sets out. With mm. Everybody who makes a, an, an application through, through the events fund. And I'm not going to re reiterate what I said about you've got second bite of the cherry here. Yeah. Personally, I don't think it's right, but we're here in this situation. So, which members will make that decision. Um, right, can I bring in uh, Councillor Driver? Right, yes, I'd just like to actually, um, say, I know that we're talking about the 10,000 as the motion, but I wouldn't particularly want to actually support that because I think that maybe because of what's been um, said about various you know, groups that I 
strong match of sport that, but I think the, 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 if that fails, I could put sport, say, something like £8,000. That was all that was. Thanks, Aaron. Councillor Green. Could I ask for you, Chair? There's £2,000 down here for marketing and communications. Could I ask what Rebecca, a uh, town promoter, what the, what the plan is for that? Do you mean for the actual new year? Yeah. Yeah, the 2000 for marketing and communication. Can I say that? Hang on, could I just bring the town clerk? Can I just say that Rebecca's not the applicant, so no, I don't I think know, she I don't can think. answer any questions for the applicant. Okay, I'll withdraw that. Yeah, okay. Right, uh, do anybody else want to make any comments? No, sorry, we're not, no, sorry. Um, so, members? We have a motion. There is a, I'm just about to say that. Thank you, <laughs> Councillor Grindon, for reminding me. Uh, there is a motion on the table which has been seconded, and that is that the, um, I think the way you've got to do it is the £2,000 that was agreed by the uh, event uh, members, plus the £8,000 which we buy in given to this event fund application. So everybody understand that? So a total £10,000. So can I ask all those in favour of doing that, please show. One, two, three, four, five, six. Pat, I can't see you. You got your hand up or down? Down. So that's six for those against. Two, three. Abstain, abstentions. One, two. So that's carried. Okay. Carried. Thank you, members. May I note the, there was a reference to um, working with and um, the town promoter. Um, can it be clear uh, what the, uh, what involvement they would like the town promoter to have, so that we've got <coughs> knowledge what. Uh, Staffing requirements is needed. Can I, yeah, can I ask that you do that outside of this meeting? I don't think it's appropriate now that we that no. we, we do that. We've got other items that we need to move on to. So move on, members. Um, item six: removal of BT phone boxes. This is to consider the motion from Councillor Austin that the council contributes funds to the removal of two BT phone boxes. Pass over to you, Councillor Austin. Thank you. <coughs> Now. Thank you. Um, we have been the, the, the word recently uh, at the beginning of the, the town clerk's report is, is generous, but actually this has been going on for several years where we have been trying to get rid of a series of redundant metal phone boxes in our ward. Um, because we're in the town centre, we seem to have a particularly large number of them. Most of them don't work. Uh, some of them are not used for savatories, some of them are used for drug dealing, etc. etc. Um, this particular proposal concerns the one on the harbour here, opposite the Travel Lodge, and the one up on the corner of Spencer Square. Neither of them has worked for a long, long time. We, I've been in correspondence with uh, BT to try and get them removed. <coughs> BT's standard process now is that they charge landowners for removing a box unless it is the source of antisocial behaviour. So we've managed to get them removed in Queen Street and one in York Street, supposed to be going on the basis that they are a focus for antisocial behaviour, but that's not the case with these two. Um, Are you asking when, us to graffiti a phone box, is that what you're saying? Pardon? You're asking us to graffiti a phone oh, box. Oh, that would be lovely, yeah. yes. Um, so, yes, graffiti and all of that, that, that doesn't count. It's, it's, you know, if people are actually, you know, filmed in their drug dealing, etc., etc. Um, during the Heritage Harbour uh, celebrations and the lead up to those, I had conversations with the leader of Thanet District Council about the one on the harbour. He was asking, does this work? Uh, it's blot, blot on the landscape, etc. And I explained that I was in conversation with them. And he said, yes, they're likely to charge us if we want to get rid of it, aren't they? And I said, yes, it does appear that way. And he said, well, come back to me once you know. <clears throat> and eventually we have persuaded them uh, backwards and forwards a long, for a long time. We've persuaded them that they are willing to remove the one on Spencer Square and this one here. They wanted to keep this one here. And I said, is that because you're using it for advertising because I'm telling you with our coastal winds, the advertising comes off within minutes and is strewn all along the, uh, the um, pavement. So we persuade them that, that they would do it. They have offered us to do that. 
uh, for the charges that are set out here. So two lots of £1,800. And I went back to Councillor Everett, who said, if you can raise one lot of £1,800, we, BBC will find the other lot. So that's where we are. It, it, he didn't say, Somerset Town Council will have to pay it. He said, you'll have to find the money from somewhere. Can you do that? And I said, well, I'll go to Rooms Gate County Council and ask them. I did ask the friends of Spencer Square, but they're really on their wrappers and, and relying on the small amount of money that they have for <coughs> gardening and the like. So it, it, but my proposal is that we find the money from here if we can. Members, questions? Uh, uh, if there's somebody who collects Metal. I mean, it's made metal, isn't it? The sandbox? I assume metal. Yep. So there must be somebody who collects metal. Well, it will be BT. It's, it's, it's safe. They have to be BT. They have to be BT. They will remove them. We can't, we can't yeah. just go and do it. We just can't go and do it. Safe. One at a time, please. So. But we have to pay for it to be removed. We don't. We don't. We don't have to pay. It's up to you as a council to decide whether you are going to allow RTC to put the other £1,800 in or not. So we don't have to pay anything if you don't want to, because it won't then happen. Uh, hang on, I've got Councillor Driver next, please. Yes, I'm just saying, uh, can't we actually turn them into something else? I mean, can't we make them into libraries or yep. flower displays? But then someone's got to look after that, and someone's got to deal with that. But yeah, yeah, that's just just, yeah. yeah. Thank you for that, uh, Councillor Green and Councillor Green. Yeah, I mean, I think this is extraordinary. This is a derelict building, basically, <coughs> in a conservation area adjacent to a Grade Two star um, uh, and we. Uh, and the owner apparently is refusing to remove it unless we pay them to do it. It's extraordinary. Well, I, I think, Councillor, this is because the the uh, electronic, whether you BT or, or any others, uh, don't come under normal planning regulations uh, to be able to take action to remove them. Uh, they have a special dispensation, and that's why it's there. So. They could decide to stick a telephone in it, which obviously they're not going to because they're just not wanted anymore. Um, so um, I think. Uh, so, I mean, you know that as yeah. gospel from, from your previous. Think, from, my, from my previous life, whether it's changed, Councillor Green, it might well have done. I, I don't know, but I don't, I don't think so. Uh, Councillor Crindon. Yeah, just to say that uh, Councillor Austin and I did discuss this um, fairly recently with you to how, um, whether or not uh, motion. Um, would have the funds for this and, and between us and um, the town clerk we concluded that the best place to apply for it was from the fund that's, that's on here but just to say yeah um, support it and unfortunately um, we can't just remove it and uh, we can't just turn it into something we like because it's other people's property but yeah I'm, I quite agree with Councillor yeah, Green it's I'm, disgusting I'm we have to pay for it I'm just thinking that uh, Following the last uh, thing that we discussed, let's give ten thousand pounds a month. We could have taken give them eight thousand pound, yeah. and which would have given uh, yeah. less than eight thousand pounds, so it's six thousand pound, and you could have looked to and then got got rid of your telephone. Hey, yeah. uh, uh, councillor. I just wanted to come back with a bit more information. Um, there is an article which I can't find at the moment, which which I read some time ago. Uh, which is about this charging policy and about how they're going around charging councils anywhere up to three and four thousand pounds per box to remove, and nobody else can do it, and we can't turn them into anything else. And um, they are obviously focuses for fly posting, graffiti, etc., etc., etc. So I know we had a huge difficulty with the ones at the station. I think the Tampa Motor will, but will uh, back me up on this because there used to be a row <coughs> of derelict boxes full of chewing gum and urine all along the front of the station and they couldn't get network rail to pay to remove them and they couldn't remove them without network rail paying. And this is some years ago. So this is, a, this is a, the, the way that they work. And they're a private company, you know. Can't we glue the doors up? Well, yes, we could, but let's see. That's it. It's just finished. It's vandalism. Sorry. It'll be hideous. That's the problem. And it'll yeah. be on our Royal Harbour. 
Right, uh, I've got Councillor Councillor Huxley, Councillor Wing, and then Councillor Shonk. Can't we uh, lobby the government to change the law so BT can't be allowed to do absences in the future? Yeah, Why not? Can we write to our MP? Write to our MP, you can, but we've got to deal with this now. So um, if we can get through with that, but that's a good idea, Councillor Wing. It sticks in my throat that we've got to pay eighteen hundred. I feel like. It's... Uh, and uh, uh, there will still be phone boxes that need to be removed because there's a still still one on York Street. And interestingly, he, he he came back to me and I said, right, we want you to maintain it then. So I certainly think we need to follow this through because it took us four years to get three removed in the Queen, Queen Street, in the job centre. And that was with the relentless help of a resident who sort of reported on a daily basis. And we did eventually get those three removed. But these, these two here are in such a prime location York Street is a, is a hot spot for crime as it, as it is now. And I, I do think, I, I fully support this, although it sticks in my throat, but I think going forward we need to, we need to be relentlessly reporting the, the boxes that are left to make sure BT maintain them, constantly fly, tip, fly bill stickers, and they need to get out and remove them. And perhaps if we make such a fuss of them having to maintain their phone boxes, they'll just remove the rest. Uh, well, I think, thank you for that, Councillor Wing. I, I just asked the, the chat part um, that we will write both to the MP and to BT yes. and say all your non-working things throughout Ramsgate we want. Can I just add that uh, they've sort of changed their policy because I, I, they said we could buy the one <laughs> pound. The, the, there is a heritage one on on across the road from Spencer Square, which I it's got to be a charity or a parish council. So I approached the Ramsgate Society because they're a charity to see if we could turn it into a, a, a bookshop, a book a book exchange, or some kind of Van Gogh sound installation uh, and that sort of got lost they agreed and it got lost in the ether but i i would like to re-pursue that us purchasing that and if the town council could do it it's a pound yeah, i'll give you a pound now come on come on can i can i just come back in please Councillor Rossley. part of the arrangement that bt wants to make with this is that they revive the red box and can they have it as a phone again that'll never happen that is their plan and they will do that as part of this arrangement. If we pay for these, but then they will revive the red box, which I, I can't see it being used. But then in a year's time, it won't happen. Mm -hmm. We can go to them and say, OK, it's not being used. Can we have a plan? But we can't do that now because their first step is if they've got, if there is a red, a, an existing box within a certain distance, they have to revive it, something to do with their regulations. Right, thank you. Thank you. Um, cash. I'm dead against uh, Ramgate Town Council spending £1,800. I know they're an eyesore. Is it, can't we find out what other councils try to do? Because £1,800 in Ramsgate. They pay three and £4,000, councils. I'm dead against spending any money to remove. I know they're eyesores. What about the proceeds of crime Matthew's got? I mean, if it's going to be a crime area, they keep on telling us we've got all this money. <coughs> it would, uh, I mean, that's the totally different part of it. Uh, yeah, this legislation, they, they certainly wouldn't with that council shop. Uh, so, because someone writes yeah. graffiti on the posters on it, they're, they're, they're not going to do anything with that. Council, Council, Council. Um, through you, Chair, uh, this business of buying them for a pound, is that correct? Could we buy them for a pound? No, as far as I'm aware, you can buy the um, vintage heritage ones, red, red ones, if they're not being used. If they're not being used, but you can't buy these. No, no, no that you. No. You wouldn't want to buy them. Whatever reason, I don't know. But, well, you, but, I, but I know what Councillor Green's saying. You would want to buy them because once you own them, you could remove them. <laughs> You're not allowed to remove them. Very clever. Well, okay, okay, members. Oh, we just um, we're going to we're going around here all the time now. Anybody got a proposal, please? Can, there is uh, Councillor Austin's proposal, and I'm going to second it, just so that it gets voted upon. Um, so, members... So, can I just make it clear what we're voting on? You're voting on for, uh, for uh, RTC to put forward £1,800 for the removal of one of the boxes, where Stanwick District Council is paying for the other one. 
It says 1810 in the report. Yes, it's a typo. Well, yeah. Just check it out. Okay. That's the year it was started, I think. It's 1810. I'll donate the 10. Yeah. So members, members, can I ask you all, all in favour of voting for that, of, of accepting that? One, two, three, four, five, six. Those against? One, two, three, four, five. That's carried. Abstentions? That's carried. Abstentions? Right. That's carried. Thank you. Right, gentlemen. Oh, I've got a telephone box leaving ceremony. Yeah. <laughs> okay, members, item seven is committee minutes. Um, there are one, two, three, four, five draft uh, minutes, and I'm just going to take them all, all in one, one go. If anyone's got anything on anyone, just shout out now if you've got any problem with any of, the, any of those minutes. No, so I'm going to pr propose that we accept the minutes. Councillor Hedrington is seconded. So they're, they're approved by their respective committees. We're just noting them. Yeah, we're just noting them. them. We're just not sorry. Yeah, we're just noting it. So, but can we just have a hands up for noting them? No, Thank sure. you. We've all, we've all noted them. Thank you very much. Right. Um, Radford House. This is to receive a written report from uh, the town clerk and finance officer. Uh, with three matters to consider relating to Radford House. May I just advise members, this is not, I don't want a full discussion about Radford House, that's coming next week, all right? So this is just specifically for these items on here. So any comments, please relate it to these items on this report. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, so firstly, um, if you could, would kindly note um, that there's an informal meeting on the 3rd of October at 7 p.m. in the Council Chamber for you to meet with um, our project manager, our business plan person and our events coordinator to ask all, all, any, any and all questions relating mm -hmm. to Radford House. The only thing is that um, please can you get the questions to me in advance so that people have got time to research and prepare the answers. And that's no more than six questions from any individual. Thank you. Can I ask the business, what happens if, if your question is clarification of information? Yes. Is that a question? It's a question. Yeah. Unfair. I know, but I'm trying to keep it so you're not there for a so fortnight. What happens if you want to make a comment? So if you want to make a comment, you need to say I'm making a comment, this isn't the question. Indeed, indeed, <laughs> indeed. So, but if, if I'm chairing it, I shall keep you down to, you know, at least two hours. So. <laughs> I won't need two hours. <laughs> right, sorry, Um Do you want to uh, vote as we go or do you want me to run through them? No, just run through them, okay. I think. Uh, the second item is additional professionals. Um, that it, we've been made aware are required. The first one, you've got a quote from a company called Elevate Fire Engineering. And a fire consultant is required as they are best placed expert to ensure compliance with fire safety regulations. This has been requested by our design team and it is required given the nature of the works, such as upgrade to ceiling. In addition, they are best placed to provide suitable fire strategy. Uh, it was a, a bit frustrating that this this is not somebody that we knew about a year ago, but I think actually it's it's linked in with um, changing reports and discussions and what's what's gone wrong uh, with regard to fire safety. That roles that have possibly been undertaken by others, it's now very limited as to who actually has um, public liability insurance to perform this role and Elevate Fire Engineering, our architect has assured us is, is, is suitably qualified to perform this role for us. Um, and the second quote is from Neat Studio, who's our architect. And this is where for a building regulations principal designer. And this is where in April of this year, building regulations secondary legislation came into effect that stipulated a building regulations principal designer was required. Um, 
Initially, there was some confusion in the industry when this role was announced as to who, who was going to do this work. Um, the health and safety executive um, uh, felt that it was the architect of the project that were best placed to do this work, and that there was a bit of toing and froing about this. Um, but the quote before you is from our, our architect to perform this role. We did speak to two other local architects about whether they could provide a quote for, for the work, and the feedback was they wouldn't want to perform this role on another architect's project. It, it would be difficult to try and mix, uh, you know, to come in on another architect's project. Um, Harwood Building Control, who we're all already working with, has explained that it's a legal duty to appoint someone, and if someone isn't appointed, then the role will fall on the client to provide it. It's also a duty of the client to ensure whoever is they are appointing is competent to do so, and our project manager has confirmed that Neat Studios is comp competent to perform this role. Um, so you are asked to, to approve these two quotes for payment from the capital projects and assets acquisition, including Radford House project. That's great. Just for clarity, could you tell us the amounts? The, yes. Amounts? So the quote from uh, um, Elevate is £5,000. It's work over two stages, totaling £5,000. And the work by Neat Studio is seven thousand pounds. Can we ask? Was the, was the the original contract with the architect? Did it not include building control? I've got two questions. I know, but just in a second, I'll let's answer answer. Um, yes, we and we have somebody covering building control. And my initial question when we heard about this role is, but oh no, we've already got someone doing this. It's no, it's it's a variation. It's it's something that's new that's come in in the legislation. Does it relate just to public buildings or all buildings? Yeah, basically, if I can just come in with that, then um, there's several reasons why the building regulations were changed. One was Grenfell, and. Um, the the other one, the specific reasons are to do with installation of homes, and um, so these were brought in under the last government, and um, they're quite strict. And what's happening as well is that uh, these new regulations are costing de developers perhaps an extra eight to ten thousand pound per dwelling. So it's quite strict, very strict, and these are required for safety issues. So what we're doing is protecting, one, protecting our building, two, protecting people who are using our building, and, and, and that's the most important thing. So. Can I ask about the fire? The fire, which is good. It's good with experts in on the fire situation as well. But have, are we also going to consult with... Uh, can fire and rescue service at some point to check that we've got everything in place? That would be that would be down to uh, the people that we employ, who especially like the building inspector, these ones specifically, to check that uh, our fire regulation is okay. And nor, as is normal with the uh, fire and fire and rescue service. They always do a regular round of places anyway and come in to see. And you can ask them any time to come in. Yep. 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 Okay, hey. thank you. Councillor Nixie. You. Oh, I was going to say uh, it was about the Grenfell. He was just, yeah. I had this at the beginning, exactly was what the chair said, but he, he said it for me. It was to do with all the legislation that came in from Grenfell. So, um, you know, and, like, and he says this is it's covering all aspects. It's also covering us to make sure that we comply with this. Yeah. Councillor Shaw? Just uh, saying that the cost of this custom house is rising. Uh, that it is. It's not the custom house. Not the customs house, you mean Radford house? Yes, Radford house. Well, that, 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 that cost is down through the roof. Uh, well, hopefully not, but it's. Well, so, um, I, I know what you mean, Councillor Shonk, yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, we cannot leave the building. As it is, these need to be employed to, to ensure that. And back to uh, Councillor Wing's 
Yeah. Can't, as a remember, town council, can't we get Camp 5? We'll go to check our buildings. I've done it in other buildings. No, they, they, will, they, will check, they will check that whatever system you put in is safe or not. And they give you an they will not. They do not give you information of how to do it, why you should do it. They'll tell you why you should put these in, but they won't, yeah. they, they won't fit it for you. They won't give any inf information on that because they won't have the the initial. They don't deal with build, building regulations. They will work with building control officers, but they won't deal with building regulations per per se. Councillor Green. Chair, yeah, yeah, I'm I'm certain that we need both of these things to be done, but I don't know what evidence we've got that these costs are reasonable. Do you want us to, I mean, if, if, if you're all in that agreement that we can go back out to try and find out others, I'm just concerned. No, I'd like to hear what cost we've got, what evidence we've got these. Oh, I, I, I don't know what the evidence is that we've got. Councillor, next thing. When we started this, and just to reiterate for Councillor Sean, this is a, this is a, a, a government instructed um, element that we have to do, so it can't be done by anybody else other than like an approved body, and the fire service isn't it. And so there, there are fewer approved people that we can choose from. But we've gone through a process of working, and first of all, people didn't know who the approved people were. So we've whittled it down to the approved people that we know. There's not as much scope for. Um, uh, what's the other called? competition as, as there is in other things at the moment but, but literally because we're at the beginning of the, this legislation being rolled out and so on and so forth so in some aspects they've sort of like got us over a barrel on it do you know what I mean because we've worked out that these people can do it and this is the cost that they will that they will charge but if member Councillor Sean did you want to say something sure okay um well, look, what I'm going to do, but part of, did you want to say something? Yes, please. Uh, so in respect of the, um, the building regulations principle designer, we've sought three quotes, but two people were not prepared to quote for the work because they were not the architect on our project. So this is where we've, we've only got one quote, whether, whether his would be higher or lower than anyone else's. But the two people we've approached, what other people won't okay, vote for the work. The we've tried. Yeah. And then again, um, the project manager has sought uh, three quotes for fire engineering, and again, two uh, two um, people have declined to vote for the work. Right, members. I'm going to propose from the chair that um, we accept the recommendation of the report. And that's to approve these two quotes for payment from the capital projects and asset acquisition acquisitions, um, including Radford House development budget. So, is there a second for that, please, Councillor Driver? I'm going to ask you to vote. All those in favour of that, please show. Those against? Thank you. That's any abstentions? No, that's carried. Thank you very much. Chair, I'm not sure if you. Your motion included it, but it was also just to note um, about the informal meeting and the that, that you've received. Members have received a, a long list of, of documents. Did you hear that? No. Okay. I let the I let the town clerk read that out again. Then, um, I've missed a bit out, evidently. Uh, so you've um, addressed the second question, which was the approval of two quotes. Um, but there's a first and third question, which was um, to note about the, info the informal meeting next Thursday and to note the long list of documents that, are, that has been shared with you. I've I think just I've checked my emails and I haven't received them. I've just checked my emails and I haven't received them. Ah. Okay. Oh, yes. They're on the agenda. Yeah. So. You don't have No, I'm just saying. They're on the agenda for now, so by all, means, by all means look at them. No, we got sent them some time back, maybe over... Yeah, so why I think I have not got email dated the 20th of September, is what I'm saying. Okay. That's, that, that's the bit, the information is shared. I'll make sure... Well, we apologise. I have not got that email. It did go to RTC councillors, so... Apologies for that. I haven't got it.
Okay. Oh, but can I just ask? Oh, can, I, can I just ask, please, members, can I just ask, uh, uh, do you know what's just been said? Yes, it's yes. just for notes. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, right. Uh, item. Blum, 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 blum. Where are we? Right, item nine is the customs house, and that's to receive a written report providing the update on the remedial matters at the customs house. Thank you, Chair. Um, so the list of building consent uh, for external and window repairs at the custom house was validated on the 28th of August, and we await a decision. The external repair work was going to commence in October, but given the unexpected list of building consent application, the contractor is quite rightly not prepared to get on with the work whilst we're awaiting a decision. Um, unfortunately, the, the next opportunity for in their schedule to get the work booked in could be as, as far down the line as a year. Um, we've run this pa uh, past the, our landlord's um, agent who's responded that whilst this is disappointing, your landlord more than most people fully understands your difficulties with TDC. <laughs> I found a vibe. And there we go. Um, so uh, the, the, to, to be aware that the, the, the work, the project is still progressing, but it might well, I think it's going to definitely be in the next financial year before the work is undertaken. And then um, also to note that CCTV has now been installed. Members, if I could just say that um, uh, I decided that we put this back until next October. I didn't want it all taking place again during the summer. Um, and I thought it was best if it's done but at the end of next, next season when we know we'll have the contractor in. That's a definite. Um, so um, all, the, all you're being asked to do, the recommendations just ask you to note that information. Unless members that have got any comment on it. Um, do the consolation builders uh, think that the building will be okay? I mean, it's going to get a, a battery over the winter, as we know. Yeah, it's not going to fall down. No, no but uh, could there be a situation where the works we're back to going back to CDC because there's other additional works that need doing. No, we, what we've done is uh, the app, we've had the surveyors in to do the application. That's gone in. The application has been accepted. Um, I have made contact with uh, the um, planning manager to advise him that in relation to the, uh, we might have a difficulty in relation to the, um, the sand start. No. Um, Terracotta. The terracotta, mm. I can't remember what they're called, pillars? Yeah, balustrades. Ba balustrades, <laughs> better word. Uh, the, 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 those balustrades, you know, the, the price of them is astronomical. Um, and I have alerted him to the fact that Thanet District Council, when it replaced the, exactly the same things in the harbour, yeah. used concrete yeah. <laughs> and then painted them. So I've made him aware of that fact, because if not, I'm going to make a big fuss about it otherwise. Um, just so he's aware of that. Councillor Green? Is there no way for TDC to get this through by early October? Probably not. Have we asked? No. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, I've tried. <laughs> well, you look to me, though, but I haven't asked, no. Um, I doubt it. I, I, I can only say that. But I think it's a good idea to put it back a year, because, uh, you know, money, money, money. I mean, I think as soon as the application's decided, get George, you know, they can pencil it in for February, or, you know, as soon as possible, but... I think with their schedule, it, it could well. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, the only thing is with that, I think when you're doing any brick brickwork, you get heavy frost and whatever. You know, and you start putting mm. stuff on top of that, it'll just come off. Mm. And if you put it on a heavy frost, something like that. So you never know the quality of the work that, you, that you're going to get. Anyway, thank you, members. That's been noted. Um, can I just say that that is now the um, end of this meeting. The date of the next meeting is the 30th of October.
2024 at 7 p.m. Now, 